Um, at the Cabinet meeting, Ian Powell pointed out an emission that has a negative environmental impact on our whole area. Um, this is relating to the Bermuda Bridge Connectivity Project, by the way. Um, we have identified numerous errors and conflicts in the studies that were prepared to support the Bermuda Connectivity Project, which has also been omitted from the Cabinet report. Can you commit to review these missing points before funding is approved? The scope and extent of the traffic modelling for the Bermuda Connectivity Project, shown on page 21 of the Cabinet Report on the 3rd of December, is not wide enough and will significantly underestimate the impact of the scheme on traffic patterns throughout the Arbury Ward. The link road created by the bridge is significantly shorter than the current route to the H of the <coughs> Heath End Road or Greenmore Road, and as a result, traffic heading towards the M6 will rattle on through Bermuda Road rather than using the purpose built H of the Four Highways. <coughs> Traffic will reassign from Hornswood Road and Tompkinson Road along Westbury Road, Northumberland Avenue and Raywood, and parallel routes to avoid localised junction queues. These new routes are not within the par Pyramix modelling code, and so the impacts on the Arbor <coughs> will not be considered, and the impacts of the scheme significantly underestimated. Please confirm to the residents of Arbury Ward whether the council is committed to working with its partners to extend the traffic modelling code and up Tompkinson Road to the junction of Hornswood Road and Westbury Road, so, such that the environmental impact on the residential areas of Nuneaton are fully understood if funding is provided to develop the scheme for public consultation. Thank you.
needed to complete the scheme. The left do not have an alternative scheme, but they have referred to the potential link road that was described in the Council's preferred option. This potential road will depend on future de developers' contribution. There is no developer interest in this that scheme at the moment, and no detailed work has been done on it. Even if the route does go ahead in future, the proposed Bermuda Connector Road will still improve access to amenities by Link Road by linking people to jobs and providing access to George Elliott and the new railway station. No. The Bermuda Connect Road will not go ahead until more detailed studies have been done to assess the environment, safety and other implications. A public consultation will be undertaken by the County Council Cabinet before the County Council makes their final decision on whether to progress to the, pro the project to completion. Thank you, Councillor. Can I know with the Council's indulgence go back to question three? Now, Claire, that's how to uh, settle down to self organise it now. Care to ask your question, Claire? <coughs> Thank you. 
natural growth form business this case, which states on the main, of the main objectives of the plan is to improve the environment for cyclists and pedestrians, to increase the mode of choice of accessibility. Considering this vehicle-free bridge is already used by cyclists and pedestrians, with no traffic on it at all, do you think opening the bridge to all traffic is going to improve the desire and the safety for cyclists and pedestrians to use this route?
actually been to social housing within the borough, as the applicants have prior debts with landlords. These people, who are already struggling to pay their rent, were the very ones that were benefited from the lower rates of rent offered by council housing, which is roughly one third cheaper than commercial private rentals. I understand that one of the aims of the borough council is to raise the standard of life in the borough, up towards those enjoyed by the affluent south of the county. To do this by forcing some of the poorest and most vulnerable individuals to look for housing outside of the borough seems immoral to me. The meeting of Edith Borough Council's housing department has also told <coughs> me that the borough homeless hostel is closing <coughs> and that homelessness in the borough is rising. It was also reported in the Metro newspaper the other day that some half a million people nationally are at risk of being evicted from their homes in the current year. <coughs> Given this insidious background of financial hardship and homelessness, I ask you, is it ethical for the Council Housing Department to blacklist the poorest and most vulnerable people in our town? Homeless and a genuine first generation mortgage. This is 
is not due to a lifestyle change, but having no other way of me being able to afford to keep a roof over his head. Again, I was told by your staff that they do not support water gypsies in the borough. I would like to know how you are going to help me provide a safe home to raise and support Mr. Tim when you do not help people like me who do not exist. I would also like to know when I'm going to get an apology from the council for the lack of information and support that I have provided me over the last six years.
two funds available to assist those Americans who are facing financial hardship as a result of the welfare reform changes introduced by the government since April 2013. There is the Discretionary Housing Payment Fund, which is available to help residents who have a shortfall between the amount of housing benefit they receive and the amount of rent they have to pay. The Discretionary Housing Payment Fund is provided by the Department of Work and Pensions, and for 2014-15, an Eaton and Bedworth have been allocated <coughs> £221,057. As well as assisting with rent shortfalls, DHPs can also be considered to help with moving costs should residents wish to move to more affordable accommodation. Local council tax support replaced council tax benefit from the 1st of April 2013. It was acknowledged that the introduction of local council tax support may mean some claimants would experience financial hardship due to the amount of council tax they had to pay. As such, a hardship fund was created specifically for those claimants receiving local council tax support. The amount allocated is £200,000. This amount also includes a contingency for an increase in caseload along with the effect of local council tax support on the council tax collection rates. The authority authoritatively actively encourages and promotes the take-up of both funds and considers applications on a case-by-case -case basis. Decisions are based upon the individual circumstances of the applicant, their income and expenditure. Promotion of the DHP and Hardship Fund <coughs> continues, and we have encouraged people, uh, including with a targeted outreach campaign, to come forward <coughs> to make the claim. We have specifically encouraged applications from those affected by the welfare reform changes, including those affected by the spare room subsidy. And I can say, Mr. Mayor, that quite a number of people have been helped and continue to be helped who are actively seeking to downsize while the council does not have the accommodation to help them. Can I ask a supplementary question, please? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Can I ask a supplementary question to Councillor Harvey? No. <laughs> Set a 
balanced budget each year and still needs to identify savings <coughs> of 219,000 in 215-16. It's also identified that a further 1.5 million of savings in 2016-17 and 2017-18 will also be required. If reductions in RSG are more severe than those assumed, additional savings will also have to be identified. However, Cabinet have already been working with officers on a two-year savings plan for 2015-16 and 2016-17 to identify how this gap can be bridged with the minimum disruption to services for local people. The Council is using innovative ways to generate income, with the setting up of the Council's trading arm, NAVSEL, and working to generate additional income through business rates from business growth in the borough. The outcome of the next general election is likely to have a significant impact on the Council's MTMP and the assumption of the need to be reviewed early in the new Parliament to ensure we are best placed for this challenge. In short, Mr Mayor, and this has been verified by external bodies that Councillor uh, Margrave refers to, electing a Conservative government in uh, the next general election, based on this Council's experience since 2010, will clearly be a disaster for local services, and we can only hope lot. it will not happen. Life is a disaster. Are you already a disaster? Can I, uh, <coughs> quiet, please? Can I have everybody yes, to until mid-January, so we've got a two-month delay on the Borough Plan Working Party, but it's clearly not going to happen for the next six Mr. months. So, I'm uh, sorry, I, you had about a quarter of an hour to speak, and I just Mr. raised Mr. my question. Mayor, uh, can I just point out as the leader of the council that I have correctly, and everybody else has, uh, behaved in accordance with the council's procedures. I don't shout across the chamber, oh, and I... Uh, yeah. uh, you just cut him off. And people are meant to ask the question that is in front of them. If you could stick to your question, that's all. Well. Uh, sorry, sir, I was just explaining why the question came from. No, there's no need for explanation. The question is there. And I did ask the question to the leader of the council, not to the portfolio holder, when I sent it in. So I asked Dennis Harvey, the leader of the council, what is the likely financial cost for each six months delay to the borough plan, including officers' costs, Lost community infrastructure levy, income, and the planning appeal costs. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Mayor, I refer that to the portfolio holder for, the, for this area to whom the question should have been asked. I will answer it because I could certainly answer your first part without any question. <laughs> to the work out of Associated with still income and planning appeals would only be possible if we had the knowledge of the future events. It is therefore impossible to answer this part of the question. Officers are employed by the council, so the cost of their time is already paid for. Their priority is for in the borough plan, which is put ahead of other work. If any delay in the borough creates time, officers, the time will be spent on those other property projects so there will be no incur increase in cost. It's a good deal I've got from back to the first one. Thank you, Thank you. 
the people in the country. In Britain today, about 29,000 premature deaths per year are blamed on this type of air pollution. <coughs> I, my question really, really wants to be to do is I, I only expect a yes or no answer to this question. Will the leader now begin to take these matters seriously and to make efforts with officers and especially outside experts to change the proposed forward public plan? Okay. 
time, can you please allow the speakers to finish what they're saying? Thank you. Is that an offer for everyone to stand yeah. down and start a whole new set of local by-elections on? Yeah, please do. <laughs> Get rid of these muppets. I'm going to ask you again to allow the speakers to finish speaking. If you're not prepared to do that, I'll be asking you to leave. Okay? Thank you. Carry on. Mr Mayor, as item 3A refers, uh, the in terms of financial plan 2014 to 18, savings of 2.6 million are required over the life of the plan. Considering this authority only receives 13% <coughs> of all council tax collected in this borough, this is an enormous amount for us to save. So far we have managed without massive redundancies or losses in services to maintain our services, which is, cannot be said in many other areas because we have looked at things which are non-essential and we have worked very hard with officers to do this. We have learned that in detail that the savings of nearly £1 million have already been identified for 2015-16. We are still over
situation of Camp Gamble in relation to grant applications from life that this came to us. So in effect, monies will be passed by us and will end up back at the county council. And then all the decisions, and we did ask the people to comment, to be taken on board by the county council at the cabinet meeting, and that will actually be decided by the county council. It's a method of, of, of uh, working through us money from the left. There's no, none of our money, but I do move that the general fund capital program for 2014-15 be increased by £500,000 to be funded by grant monies from Scotland, Coventry and Warwickshire left. So basically, Mr. Mayor, it will come in and go out again. Thank you, Councillor Harvey. Is there a second?
Councillor Margrave or Councillor Navarro or Councillor Caroline Phillips. Councillor <laughs> Phillips. For Councillor Pomford. For Councillor uh, Tracy Shepherd. For Councillor Tandy. <coughs> Taylor. For. Councillor Tromans. Against. And Councillor Wilson. Against.